Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. God damn it, he's back. Yeah, buddy. Hey now. <laughs> hey now. You piece of shit. Bert Koontz, TV Look. star, uh, wilderness, oh, wilderness expert, I would say. Um, some might even call you the uh, quarantine whisper. Uh, Bert Koontz he's is the, back on the show. He's the Wy- he's the Wyoming version of Joe Exotic. That's what I feel. Like. You know, Bert, oh God! You know, you Bert, know Bert used to work at the I'll, fucking. I'll that. I don't he, care. he used to work, <laughs> he used to work at the Fort Worth Zoo. Did you really? Did you work at a fucking I zoo? Did. I worked at a zoo for a while. He taught, How dirty yes. is that? He so, taught, I mean, look, we've heard all the stories. Yeah. How no, dirty no, no, no. is the it? For, this is a real no, zoo. The Fort Worth yeah, Zoo is legit, and I work in the animal hospital, and it like it is one of the nicest animal hospitals. I've ever seen in my entire life completely professional and it was it was an actually really really good time in my life I enjoyed it pretty much because I fucking hate people yeah so any chance I got to work around animals if you're a veteran and you're an 18 delta or a medic try and get a job at a zoo in an animal hospital because they need qualified medical people and you don't have to deal with too many fucking people you know what so, I heard is that good job. Uh, you were you were given prostate exams to gorillas and shit is that true <laughs> that is not that is I would Rectal- Especially if I was getting paid for it. Rectally, but, no. you were giving yes. You, were you haven't been, prostate advantage. You haven't been on the rectally. show for a while. Can you go back through what it like? What the process of a DRE is? That's a DRE digital. is a digital yep. rectal examination, and anybody that's been in the army or military in general is familiar with that. Because unless you're a female, but if you're a male, every two years you have to get a physical, and every uh, usually it should be over forty that you get a DRE, but for some reason, everybody that goes into basic training has had the old uh, <laughs> prostate check. No, yeah. no one did that to me. I was 24 when I went in, and nobody touched you my did, butthole. It's okay. You, whatever childhood issues you have, you can say it's all right that a doctor put his finger in your butt. No, like, I, I asked him. You wanted it. Like, yeah, I demanded I'm it. like, are you sure you don't need to do this? Because it feels weird in there. Were you the guy doing it, Bert? <laughs> Uh, I did have to do my team. You know, every time your team, if you're an 18 Delta and a medic on a special forces team, you have to do your physicals for your guys every two years. So no yes. shit. Yes. So you couldn't jack off then until every two years. Like that was, you kind of had to hold it in until and it was, I'm just Bert. Welcome back to drinking bros, by the way. Um, you I just you two guys make- are the biggest pieces of shit. I've ever, you know what? I don't have to take this bullshit. I'll walk off this fucking podcast right now. I don't need it. What am I going to get? Five likes. Some guy named Todd who works at Best Buy in Indiana. He's got a five thousand dollar beard and a thirty eight hundred dollar Honda Civic. Get the fuck out of here! Drinking Bros is a bunch of losers. You're all pieces of shit. Whatever. <laughs> the, the scary thing about it is because you're not in studio and we're in quarantines right now. Bert actually could walk off the show, and that would be it. You know, we you can't know stop you. I'm out of here. <laughs> See that? I'm gonna go get some buffalo. I'm gonna get my buffalo on. How many buffalo do you have? Now? Yeah. How do? You, how many do you own now? So right now we're and, and so here's the deal in the livestock community. I know you got a lot of ranchers. And by the way, guys, I'm joking. The Drinking Bros community is fucking fantastic. You guys are great people. Everybody, guys and girls, never had a bad moment with Drinking Bros people on social media. It's true or in real life. Yeah. <clears throat> the amount of the amount of Drinking Bros is still continually before this quarantine that come by the coffee shop and stop by and I say, how did you find us? And they're like, man, I heard John deep on Drinking Bros. Yeah. Awesome people, and this isn't about selling a bunch of shit and hawking a bunch of coffee and T-shirts, so I don't want you guys to think about that. I love being on the show, and I love the community. People are fucking great. You say what you want, you do what you want, and you're just good Americans. So I, I, when I joke about drinking bros being losers, I'm totally fucking around, so don't, don't anybody kill yourself. So yeah, the, uh, the, the livestock community is a weird one. It's kind of like asking somebody how much money they have in their bank accounts or stock accounts or in their wallet even. You typically don't ask somebody how many how many head of livestock they have, and you don't ask somebody how much acreage they have on their property. Oh, thanks, oh. thanks, oh. thanks for the cultural education. Now back to the question: How many fucking yeah, buffalo so do you have? We have we, I don't we care about, about you and your rules, bitch. <laughs> we have about 156 uh, right now. We're at about 156, and we've got seven bulls. And I've, I've got one more bowl that I bought. And I say, all right, we've got a team of people that do this. Tyler Gray, who you guys know from the SEAL team. And, Love Tyler. And, uh, CBS SEAL team. Mm-hmm. 
um, there's a bunch of people involved in the whole operation. Nick, Nick, uh, Campbell, who runs our animals, uh, but in uh, Candace and Nick's wife, Samara, but <clears throat> we're, you, you typically, I say I bought a, another bull Our eighth bull is in Nebraska. And I post about him on social media cause he's going to be a fucking tank. He's a monster, gorgeous animal. I'm kind of obsessed with bison bulls, but a good ratio is about one bull to 10 cows. And, you know, for us, we're a little bit over that because I like bulls. Most of our bulls have come from Ted Turner or uh, Rocky Hollow. The, actual, the actual Ted Turner? Yeah, Ted Turner, Turner Enterprises, they own about 550,000 bison, which is, you know, a good chunk. I'm sorry, they own about 55,000 bison, which is, you know, a, about 10% of all the bison in the world. Yep. You know, they own a huge chunk of that. And their breeding program, Ted Turner was way, way ahead of the curve. He started doing this a long time ago. So, you know, we bought, we buy our, they have an auction every year. So we'll try and go to the Turner auction every January, February and buy bulls from them because the genetics, you know, the, the, the livestock industry in specifics is about genetics, but bison, you know, we're, we're really big with what we're doing on having the most pure genetic bison we can get that, that have you know, a certain amount of alleles in their DNA you can test. They go back to the original prehistoric bison, bison, bison. And that's our goal. So to answer your question, Dan, you piece of shit. <laughs> um, we have 155 animals, and out of those, we've got about 68 cows, and all those cows are pregnant, should be pregnant right now. Typically with bison, you have about a 96% birth rate, conception and birth rate. They're very healthy and hardy. Mm -hmm. So we should have a bunch of babies, you know, 60 plus babies here in the next two months. You know, bison are like humans. They have about a nine and a half month or 283 day gestation, mm -hmm. just like a close to like a female human. And, you know, we're going to have a bunch of babies. They go through rut. You know, we keep our bulls with our cows year round. Some guys will sort them off or they'll separate themselves off in bachelor herds. But the bulls with bison rut like elk do. Mm -hmm. um, Elk's <clears throat> probably the closest animal. About once a year for a month or two, they they get horny and they do their bison thing. And uh, me, then about nine months later, go ahead. Yeah, let me, let me ask you this. What is the What's the purpose for having them all pregnant? Is this Are these for you to keep? Or do you hope to sell yeah, them too, later on down the road yeah. like Ted Turner? So for us, there's two things. One, the whole group, we just love bison. I've been obsessed with them since I was a kid. To be a part of this, I just if I had it my way, I'd never sell an animal and I wouldn't do meat, I wouldn't do anything, but that's not sustainable because we don't have a lot of money. Of course. So for us, depending on the market price of bison, every time one of those calves hits the ground, it's about <laughs> fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar bill hitting the ground. So um, and bison, you know, bulls are more expensive. Mm -hmm. Our least expensive bull was, you know, about $5,000. Our most expensive bull is, was a lot, lot more than that. Um, and that's, but for us to answer your question, Ross, we're ultimately, and I don't want to let too many cats out of the bag too soon, but our goal is to get into meat and meat products and mail order meat and you know we're working really hard in the background to get into the bison meat industry but we're also going to keep generating we're going to keep a lot of these animals and continue to grow our herd here in wyoming that's great man because i look i love bison meat but it is it's really hard to get and it's really fucking expensive um is that where you're hoping in, to do is cut down on that no i don't think that'll be cut down and it's bison is weird when you look at it as a whole the two coasts eat more bison than anybody else because they're more health conscious. Nothing against the Midwest, man. I'll, I'll eat a, a deep fat fried covered in chocolate, a quarter pound of cheese from McDonald's right now. I could give a shit, but the Midwest typically is not as health conscious as the East and West coast is. So the bison demand right now, even with the quarantine going on, the bison meat demand is in larger demand than it's ever been in the history of, of bison ranching. So it's a good thing for everybody in the bison business. But most of that meat is going to the east and west coast, to your Whole Foods, to your 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 high end, you know, fashion grocery stores where people don't mind paying twenty one dollars a pound for a really lean bison ribeye. Bison's leaner than beef. It's healthier than beef. And I got beef cow friends that are gonna partners in business with me that are probably shaking their heads if they hear this going, that dumb son of a bitch doesn't know what he's talking about. But it is. Bison meat's just healthier. 
pound for pound, it's more protein, it's healthier, and I think it actually tastes better. I do too. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm in that camp as well. You know? I have a I just, question. I just do. About, yeah. I got a question about the breeding practices. So when when they go off, why are you even looking at me, Alec? Because not who, you. Who is this? There, our producers. Pre- he's already on. laughing. I haven't even told my fucking joke yet. Yeah, I'm laughing too in my head. I'm going, oh shit, what is this? Yeah. Thing? When you're talking yeah, about bachelor herds, do do bison do prison yeah. gay? Are they prison gay? No, bison are like they they will knock heads with each other. I, I and like they their goal, man. It's the way it's the way the human race should be. Like it's literally they fight it out. The strongest one wins and gets to fuck anything he wants. Like that's that's how it works. Like it just is. They'll go into bachelor herds as rut starts. That whole time in bachelor herds, all throughout the year, you know why they find a good patch of grass, or if you feed them hay, or you put protein cake on the ground. The biggest, baddest one's going to push everybody out of the way and get there. Rut is kind of the same way. And typically, what happens in the bison, it's it's pretty funny. It's kind of like you, Dan, because you hang around with a bunch of really cool guys and you're a piece of shit. The cool <laughs> guys will be trying to show each other up. And a guy like you that's a weasel piece of shit will go in and have sex with all the animals while the other guys are fighting. Yeah, so, that's uh, el- seals do that as well. There's something called a beach master. <laughs> not, 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 not Navy seals, but like a seal. So the biggest seal usually will be what's called a beach master, and he'll be up on the beach with all the whores, right? right? Because he's fought off all the other dudes, and he just bangs all the girls. And then the other dudes watch from a distance and try to sneak in and bang one from, you know, occasionally. Yeah. Using trickery yeah, the, and whatnot. And the, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's kind of funny that way because the, the bigger, badder bulls will be battling each other out. And a smaller bull that might be a little younger that doesn't have the same place in the, in the hierarchy will sneak around while they're battling it out 50, 50, 100 yards away. He'll start, you know, doing his thing. So that's why it's important to have good bulls all the way around, good breeding bulls. Uh, and that's what our goal is. You know, for the size ranch and operation we are, we have really, really good bulls. But we've also paid for it and gone into debt on it. You know, we now these bulls have to make us money. It's, you know, now to get our money back on the bulls and the cows we purchased, you've got to wait three or four years of calving to have those calf crops gain your money back. So you have to take care of your animals. And we're new at this. You know, Nick has got a lot of experience. Tyler and I don't. And Candace and Tyler, you know, Tyler's girlfriend, Rachel, we don't have a lot of experience in this at all. So we're learning. It's been two years of learning and we're getting there. Well, I'm sure you saw Smithfield, one of the biggest uh, pork processing plants in the United States, shut down this week, right? Yeah. And that that's, you know, the pork and chicken and all these industries are trying to a bad time for livestock producers in America because the, the feedlots and the processing centers are, are raking your average rancher over the coals the price of meat in the grocery store is not lowering but the price that ranchers are getting for their beef and their bison is lower than it should be if that makes sense you know these the in between the middlemen the guys that they're owned by you know a few select people the chinese have some money in it some overseas people have money in it and they're not paying the price of meats actually staying the same or going up Mm-hmm. But the price that rancher, if a guy raises, that's his livelihood, and he's been doing it for three or four generations, he takes 400, 500, 1,000 cattle to market, he's getting, he's probably going to lose money right now if he does that. So Wyoming, for instance, just last week is bucking the system, and they're the first state to say, hey, fuck it, we're not going to play by your guys' rules because we're Wyoming, and we're going to allow somebody like me to sell bison meat i can sell a bison to my neighbor or process that meat and sell it to my neighbor or friend or anybody i want to same with beef cows so they're going to start cutting out these middlemen and what you're going to start seeing i think is a lot of guys like in wyoming if we had the money we'd build a processing plant a usda processing plant right here and we would just sell meat to anybody in town county state and move out from here but Wyoming's changed the game up, and that just passed about two weeks ago. That I can any rancher can sell meat to to anybody they want in Wyoming. Yeah, it's, it's big it, deal. It's, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it is. And I, it's interesting you brought that up because uh, you know with the the pandemic and all that shit going on, meat has been gone from stores left and right. And I was at uh, like one of my my go to grocery stores. I know the butcher there, <laughs> and I didn't want to bother him because you know. There was a line of people or whatever. I went to go buy a, a different cut of meat that was already had the plastic wrap on it, you know. And he he came over and saw me. He was like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And he goes, "Don't buy that." 
And I was like, why not? And he goes, well, some people aren't <laughs> being so honest during these times about what type of what cut of meat you're buying. And so they're putting a different label on it, um, charging you a higher price for it just to get rid of some of it and and everything else. And that, that's happening at like lo local grocery stores and shit. Yeah. And it's it, that's happening. And then the other one is, you know, there's a the larger consumer grocery stores and chains won't, you know, origin country of origin and ranch of origin whatever state of origin farmers and ranchers are trying really hard to get that put back into play where you have to say where the meat comes from because you know what 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 happened you know and, and this is i we could talk about this for four hours but you'll have places hey, like Australia, you know the beauty of it Bert? Brazil. we have all day we well, have... let's do this then because i don't have <laughs> yeah. shit to do <laughs> not, except not, a nap. neither do we i was gonna take a nap um but <laughs> You know, these countries like Brazil and, and Australia, and they would have processing plants and big, huge freighters offshore, but that foreign meat is invading the United States. It's, and I, I don't think it should be excluded 100%, but you should be able to, if I'm going to go in and pay $8 for chicken or 20 bucks for a good cut of steak, I should know exactly where that came from. That's what I think. So. I agree, that's why yeah. Yeah. it's super fucking important wherever you live in the United States, unless you're smack in the middle of a huge metropolitan city, there's probably a ranch within a half hour of you that sells really good meat. And you can find mm. out, call them, find out where their meat goes, mm. support local ranchers and farmers. And I'm not, I'm not an anti-corporate guy. Half the shit I do is, you know, I support corporate stuff. Like I love York peppermint patties. I'm going to, I'm going to support, you know, corporations and everything I do every day whether it's cereal or food or my shoes, my car, my truck. But if you can support local farmers and ranchers, <clears throat> there's never been a better time in the history of America to fucking do that. Yeah, now it's now's easy a good to do. Time, yeah. It's a good it's time. It's easy it, to do. It's a good time for uh, anything local. So if you're uh, – I'm sure everybody out there has noticed that uh, with Postmates – They've they've expanded their roster. A lot of people have having or ha having to shut down their restaurants, but they're mm -hmm. starting to just do delivery now. Uh, it's yeah. more it's more statistically speaking, it's more important to buy from places that are local. For this reason, um, <clears throat> and the one thing people aren't giving up right now, uh, in particular in California, is the farmers markets. Um, because look, if if they're not if the farmers and ranchers aren't able to sell the vegetables, fruit, meats, and all that other stuff, like that, it's just bad food. The food's going to go bad. They're not going to make any money. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah. now and is it, the time. If, if you, so every, for every dollar spent in, a, in the local economy, it multiplies 7 to 11 times before it leaves to go to the statewide economy. This is what that means. So you go to a local restaurant and buy their food, right? You just order dinner from there. They've bought supplies from local stores, whether it be food or utilities or equipment or supplies, whatever it is. And that happens, on average, it happens to a factor of seven. Not that seven different sales happen, but seven times the money happens within the local economy before it leaves the local economy. So if you're worried about your town, and especially if you're in a small town or something like that, you, you definitely need to be patronizing smaller places and not just going to McDonald's yeah, it, every day. Yeah, hands down, and in, in supporting businesses that are reputable and that aren't corporate and you know, again, I, I support corporations and everything I do, so I'm not going to burn them all to the ground. But right now, you know, those corporations, there's a reason Costco and Home Depot and Walmart mm -hmm. and everybody are open, but my fucking coffee shop is not open. Right. There's yeah. a reason for that. We don't have the lobbying power. We don't have the money. We don't have the connections at an executive level to say, hey, fuck you guys. We're staying open because we're a big essential business. You right. know, it, mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. And it, this whole thing has proven to me one thing. One, it's it's reaffirmed to me that politicians are the biggest pieces of shit in the mm. history of this country, except for the guys that founded this country. You know, we've we've gone. I won't even get into that. But politicians are fucking weasels. Like every single fucking one of them. You can't tell me this guy's a good one. He's out for the people. Or this guy served in the military. He's a great. He's a fucking politician. Or she's a politician. They're fucking shitbags. Period. And we're in a position right now where the people that are really getting hurt and it's kind of funny, all the memes and the coronavirus shit and this and that and social distancing. And I'm part of it. I post funny stuff. 
But man, within the next 30 to 60 to 90 days, when all this stuff shakes out, there's going to be a lot of suicides. There's going to be a lot of people that lose businesses they've had for multi-generations. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of divorces. There's going to be a lot of employees that lose their jobs and can't pay for their stuff, and they're going to have to go on government welfare. It's it's not going to be pretty, and it's, you know, it's. I think a lot of this has been overhyped and overblown. And I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not going to be one of those people that says, oh fuck it, old people should die anyway. You know, they're old. They're going to. It's just like getting the common flu. That's not the case. I don't ever want to see anybody die again unless they're a piece of shit terrorist or or somebody that's a pedophile mm. or a child molester. but Or Carol Baskin. The, or Carol Baskin because she did kill her husband, and she's fucking creepy. Yeah, yeah. Like super creepy. Um, but I think, I think we really need to examine how overblown this has been with the media and politicians. Mm. Like this is – politicians were at a point where everybody in the country was tired of them even even our president everybody was tired of it through all of this stuff and now they've made themselves super relevant again because people like me fill out small business loans or go for that funding the you know the payroll protection program uh, now bankers are relevant again and politicians are relevant again and it's kind of fucking bullshit um, I think this has been way 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 overblown and Wyoming's a perfect example I don't think there's been a death in Wyoming yet you know, people already social distanced. People are smart about it. I'm not saying Wyoming's a better state than anywhere, but don't pack your ass into a city with 22 million people. You know, move out of the city. Don't fucking move to Wyoming, though. It's horrible. You hate it. It's the yeah. shittiest state in the union. I it's think fucking horrible. Kanye, here. Kanye lives there. Um, home of Kanye now. Yeah. Um, got, there's a lot of things we got to get back to as a, as a society. I, I go back to... Uh, like I know your your big thing is eighteen fifty three and all that like nonsense, but uh I'm more of a Timothy Leary guy, you know, like turn yeah. on, tune in, drop out that whole situation because a lot of Absolutely. a lot of people haven't read his works over the year because they thought he was a crazy dude that was on drugs all the time. Yeah, which dropping is, acid yeah crazy technically guy true. Acid. Yeah, but yeah. he he's super smart. But he like the things he was talking about was like strip away all the the fundamentalism and the and the rigidity of religion, for example, and you have something that's a good idea, like to be connected to the world and shit like that, and to try to find meaning and purpose and be kind to, to each other. Religion is, in my opinion, terrible, but uh the idea behind it makes a lot of sense. And then <clears throat> I, I go beyond that with the way we live our day-to-day -day lives, right? So we're so used to packaged and commercial. I think it's, especially for kids, it's important to understand where all the shit comes from. Like all they see- Well, and Dan, like just, just, to, just to interrupt for a second, I think people have also, not just in consumer goods and life, but people have also bought into packaged religion. Oh yeah, You know, sure, again, yeah. me standing in a field of buffalo or bison yesterday for eight hours with just myself and a camera, Man, that, I, I don't think there's anything more religious than that in my entire life that I've ever right. done, <clears throat> ever, period. And I think people buy into this organized, structured religion where you have to build a fancy church. What are those fucking churches good for right now in the last month? And fucking close. nothing, because you, yeah. you can't go to them. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you've got to figure out another way to pray, I just, another way to do it. it it's, go ahead. It's, it's just a microwave culture. Everybody wants everything now, and they want it the way they want it. You know what I mean? Which, you know, that's part of of society growing up for lack of a better phrase. But I think it's important, especially for kids to understand where things come from. Right. Cause all they know is a couple of keystrokes happen. And then a couple of days later, some shit shows up at their door. Right. It's hard to teach a child the value of not just a dollar, but of life in general. For example, I think it's important for kids to get taken to a farm and see an animal fucking killed and butchered. Hands down. And I think that should be, I don't, you guys are both older than shit. Did you guys have to take a home ec class? Like I grew yeah. up in Kansas and in, in Stanley, Kansas, Stillwell, Kansas, small rural community, like pseudo rural, uh, south of Kansas City, and you had to take home ec. You had to take shop. You had you didn't do any animal. I didn't do any animal husbandry because <clears throat> there was enough people in my area that I learned how to do that stuff. But you know, again, I'd forgotten so much. I went on a mountain lion hunt, uh, and I'm not a huge hunter. I'm getting into it, but it's more for meat than it is for sport and conservation. But, you know, Buster Frierson, who you guys have had Buster on the show before, Great guess, you know, yeah. Buster and a couple of, yeah, he's awesome. Um, <clears throat> Buster's one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet, but you know, we're sitting there and, you know, we're cleaning and dressing 
uh, a mountain lion that I had shot that we ended up eating that night and it just revived like, you know, and they had to walk me through it. It had been so long, you know, and I, I basically was back to day one and I just said, fuck it, put my hands up and said, Hey, you guys teach me how to do this. Like I've never done it before. And I had four ranchers and cowboys working ranch cowboys teaching me how to do this. I knew enough that I could have done it on my own, but it would have been pretty ugly, but it just, I did the same thing a couple weeks ago with an elk and the same thing, you know, I'm going to do a Buffalo and I'd love to, that'd be an awesome drinking bros is to, to have, you know, to film this and document cleaning a Buffalo down to every cut yeah. of meat. Uh, but that's, you're right, Dan. I don't think, and I live in a community that's huge on 4-H, that's huge on future farmers of America, that's huge on animal husbandry. And like right now, you know, those people aren't hurting. They've got freezers full of meat. Mm -hmm. They can shit outside. They're not worried about it. They'll shit and go wash their butt with, with a garden hose. They don't fucking care. They've got eggs because they have chickens. They have milk because they have milk cows. And they're laughing right now going, you know, how's fucking New York City and San Francisco and, and Los Angeles and Dallas doing? Like, how you doing right now? Because I, I know you got $22 million in the bank and you live in South Park in Dallas. H how you doing? They're fucked. Like your twenty-two million dollar house isn't going to get you meat and eggs and and food if you need it. Yeah, no, I think it, it's true. Um, hey, did they close? Did they close down your business? By the way, your coffee shop. They, ah, uh, not really. I mean, Sheridan again. It's Wyoming, so the governor here is actually doing a good job. We can't have dine-in. You know, we can't have drink-in coffee customers. Mm -hmm. But people can come by and pick up bags of coffee or get coffee to go. And it's just such a small town now. We have probably, I got a sign on the door right now, but two people have tried to come in. But if somebody comes in, we'll open the doors and I'll do a pour over coffee for them. Um, and nobody's nobody's going to, the police here aren't going to come say, hey, you get the $50,000 fine. They just want people to be smart about it here. And the governor even <laughs> said that. He said, we'll never go on a full lockdown, you know, house arrest, lockdown, whatever it's called, because people here are already smart enough in their nature to, to go, hey, I don't need to go to fucking Walmart to get to get a new iPhone right now. I'll wait until this is over. But I need to go into the grocery store, and I, I'm going to get in as fast as I can to get meat, <clears throat> if they need to, to get essential goods. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it's we, funny. We it's funny work. It's funny how haphazardly a lot of people are acting, given how, given how like, pussified our culture has become. Like, the idea, if you presented the idea to take your child – to uh to a farm and, and see a cow get slaughtered and butchered for example i would expect that the majority of people 60 plus percent probably would be like no i'm not going to do that to my kid what do you mean do that to your kid do it for your kid is what i would say like it's right we, we just don't understand uh as a culture what what sacrifice means and that's what the animal is doing i mean that's what nature is everything below us sacrifices to make our lives possible right that's a good lesson to learn and it's a good no, lesson really to learn isn't. that sometimes, like, things that are important to you have to sacrifice themselves for you to have the, uh, and it's not always personification, it's not always an, a living creature, but things have to sacrifice for you to have the life that you want or that you deserve or whatever the case is, right? So that's why I want to I do, I haven't decided how to do it yet, but I think maybe taking your Buffalo Children's book and making an animated series out of it, let a, letting the kid get to know the buffalo first, and then take him outside and shoot him in so, the head. <clears throat> that, that, and we're going to get into that. Oddly enough, we're going to get into that in the kids' books. Maybe not as graphic as your creepy ass said it. But. <laughs> no, like I, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, man, because I, I just I watched him just pull an absolute fucking bong full of, of weed, and I was like, hey, man, like that sound that sounded like really high talk, and I'm trying to dissect it in my mind, and I was like. No, man. That, no, that, think that, about that doesn't play on think, any think about level it. Think whatsoever about it. right now. Think about like, it. Somebody brings their, like, I don't know, 10-year-old child yep. to your place. And it's a group of 10-year-old kids. It's a, what is that, a third grade class? A gaggle. Third grade class, fourth grade. I don't sure. Know yeah. Anyways, uh, middle school class or elementary school class comes. You show them the video. It's like, oh, this is fucking, I don't know, fucking Derek the bu the bison. And Derek's going on doing his shit and fucking all like they're there's like all right let's go outside we're gonna meet Derek. they're like oh shit we're gonna meet Derek, and you just walk up behind him and shoot him in the back of the head <laughs> yeah uh so, so dan will never have children yeah. or be married <laughs> um ever in this dan, lifetime or dan, any other this all makes perfect sense to me i don't no, understand why no, it doesn't, there's a problem dan will not be running a, uh, a, a, a not be a tour guide at the ranch that's for sure. <laughs> no no uh, no but i think 
I think so. There's a couple companies that are at the forefront of the bison industry, and they've converted semis into meat packing plant or meat processing plants, and they actually do that. Well, they wine, wineries, wineries do that all the time, by the way. I used to do yeah. security for a lot of the wineries up and down the West Coast, and they do the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah, they come out and they bring a truck out. It's a yep. processing center, and they, they actually shoot the bison right right there. What if you strangle them right there. with a fucking, like, with piano, piano wire. wire? You just, yeah. like, sneak up behind so the bison. You're here's... wearing a suit with a red tie on, like, hit me. Did they right? do that at the winery? Like so they just point. walk up behind the grape and then just just blast it? Just, yeah. just shrug it. They, the whole <laughs> bunch of grapes, though. They just put... <laughs> Dan, I, I welcome you. We have good insurance on the new ranch, so I'm good with that. Like, you should come out, and you can pick any animal. I will let you pick any animal that's over two years old, and if you can strangle them with piano wire, man, I will pay you ten grand. and I'll find you can a keep cat. The meat. I'll find a cat out there, and I'll strangle that cat. No, you, said, you said bison. You said any animal, bitch. I, I would film that in a – any bison animal that we have, I would film that in a heartbeat. That would be fucking brilliant. That might be the greatest video of the next. Let's 20, 2021, the year Dan gets killed by a bison. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to get gored to death by a bison. By the way, if you're in public and you see bison, public, by public, I mean a farm or out in, the, out in nature, if you see an elk or something like that, don't try to fucking pet it or take pictures with oh, it, for Christ's sake. God, those are my favorite fucking videos. And uh, it's dude, like, that, man, lady, that lady got fucking eaten, right? How, how, how do you... I've got a hundred of those videos on my phone. I, I, that's like my, I <laughs> yeah. watch them when I can't, when I can't sleep at night. That's, that's I watch your porn. those Yellowstone videos. It yeah. is, it is so great. And I've seen it a few times in person where guys will get out and they're walking closer and they're looking back and they're walking closer. And I'm just sitting there going, man, this guy's about to get his ass wrecked. <laughs> and it's, I just don't get it. And it happens every year. It's because like somebody, they, they it's look. like somebody out on Fourth of July and they're lighting fireworks and throwing them, and you're like, "All right." And then Jason Paul Pierre happens and yeah, blows off his I, hand. Look, I, I, but I understand it though. You see those those bison, right? They're so huge. Yeah. They look slow. They look lethargic, and they look they look pretty friendly, right? Um, they I, do. I think people don't understand the force that those people think of them like cows. Have. That's the problem. Yeah, and they're not like cows. No, no they're, they're not. not. They're they're. I say it all the time in my posts on social media. They, they're like, take, take the greatest running back and the greatest linebacker in NFL history, and that's the kind of athlete in the livestock community. If you combine those, that's a buffalo or a bison. Like they are, <laughs> they will turn on a dime. They can run 35 miles an hour, and they can get to 35 miles an hour really fucking fast. And people Shit. see them. And I, you know, I post in videos now because I've, I've got our bulls this last week. You know, our four, four biggest bulls will take a piece of protein cake out of my hand. Mm -hmm. But I also know, and I never put myself in that position where I'm in between them. I'm on the back of a ranger, and I have plenty of room to move, but they will kill you. And they're not aggressive like a lion or a tiger where they're just going to snap on you. Their signs, their tail will go up. They'll grunt. You know, they'll paw the ground, but – you know, it's it's no joke, man. They are no fucking joke. Like they're they're every bit better than you know those bulls you see on the PBR. That those guys are riding. I'd put a big bison bull up against one of them. I'd put a big bison bull up against three of those bulls. They're just athletic. They're fast. They can turn around in a circle because the way they're built, they can turn around super fucking fast and they'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, look, I, I've I've seen the videos. I saw that lady get just absolutely stroked by one, and I was like, "Whoopsie!" She got a little yeah. too close. Wanted a nice little Instagram pic, maybe in a Nashville, <laughs> and uh, she got murked by that fucking thing. No, and I, I actually I don't want to see anybody get hurt except for those people. You know, it's it's <laughs> if you get if you go to a park and get out of your car and try and pet an animal that's as big as your car that has sharp horns, it, it, man, it's there's a reason that is happening to you because you're a fucking moron <laughs> and you're you're the same person that's going to cause everybody problems at the airport waiting in line to get on a plane you're the same person that's going to park shitty in a fucking parking lot you're a fucking <laughs> idiot and you probably ought to get run over by a buffalo some some people just aren't meant to be here they're not um and no but you know what they're meant to be is in a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros you know the rules bert we got some fucking sponsors to keep this whole shit wagon on the air i uh, love it and seriously i need to order a ghost bed i'm not joking we need a new bed i need a king size ghost bed 
I'm ordering one tonight. Everything is 25% off on ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, pillows, sheets, mattresses, adjustable bases, everything in the store. Best deal you can get. And uh, you should be able to get all your stuff for a king size for under a thousand bucks right now. Easily. Easily. What's the code? Uh, it's drinking just bros. ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Yeah. It's just the URL. We have our own URL okay. now. We've, got, we've gotten famous with them. We've gotten oh, shit, fancy. big time. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. As always, the 36 month pay as you go program, no interest on that as well. So if you just got that government check that's uh, coming out this week for, for 12 hundo. Uh, and you're worried about blowing it all. You don't have to. It's like 20 bucks a month with this fucking thing. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got mybookie.com. This is a little bit different. This is promo code drinking bros. Uh, and we also, that, that's for the sports um, because we're going to be gambling a lot on the NFL draft coming up next week. Finally, we got some fucking, some form of sports back to bet on. And uh, the casino is open. Um, since all the casinos are closed in Vegas and Atlantic City and all that shit, They've opened up a casino online on mybookie.com, and that is promo code Drinking Bros Casino on that one. And that not only will double your deposit, it will double it in a half. So you put in a hundred, you get one hundred and fifty dollars down. It's up to one hundred and fifty percent back with your money at uh, mybookie.com. Uh, that that casino shit is where everybody's going, man. Uh, blackjack, uh, slots, and they got uh, a little poker in there. So you can beat people from around the world. So if you're bored as shit up, up late at night like we are, and you can bet on all the celebrity deaths too, by mm-hmm. the way, which went over last week. Go to mybookie.com. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The Deadpool was but it last week. It's it matchups, sick. though. It's not, it's it's not a Deadpool. It's, it's a, like matchups of different two, Of who's going to die first. A de- I mean, they this might have be Deadpool, dangerous. Though. So like Tr- God, Trump versus broke. Putin. I don't need, you shouldn't have told me that. Trump versus Putin. Who's going to die first? Who do you got? Oh, Trump for sure. Can I say that? Is that illegal? No, no, no not at all. I, look, it's, I, it's billionaire I, versus billionaire. I, so we had a hard I time. I agree, with it. though, because like, let's say something weird happens, and either one of these guys contracts some kind of rare disease. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be able to cure it? Trump in America or Russia? Not that Russia is better than at medicine, but they will try anything. They'll try illegal shit like, first. Yeah, yeah, they'll be injecting yeah. fucking monkey blood into this guy. Yeah. Like, well, Putin, Putin just Putin's just cool as a cucumber. The guy doesn't lose his temper. He just kind of even keel. I don't think his blood pressure ever rises. He's just like kill them. He's murdered okay, so many people, them. though. Yeah, exactly. He just and and Trump's the exact opposite. His blood pressure is probably crazy. He's got you know McDonald's milk, strawberry milkshake running through his vein. Like <laughs> I just he's got I don't America think he's, running through his veins, brother. And America, I'm not a commie <laughs> by by any means. I just think Putin is more relaxed. I hope Trump lives to be about 400 years old and he changes it to where he can be president for the next 20 years. Same. Or can a, I say that? A, Are you guys pro-Trump? gets in there. I am. I'm, I look, you know me, motherfucker. I'm, always, I'm just kidding. I'm pro-Trump as I'm shit. I'm not. I know Dan's not. Dan's, I don't care. Dan's waiting for Obama to come back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's, Dan's at the Democratic doorstep. He's waiting for Elizabeth Warren to take over for Biden once he dies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cause you know, she's, she's going to be that VP pick. That's the only way we're going to get the fucking Bernie bros. Um, is this guy for real Joe Biden? Oh, uh, well, hey, we'll, about, we'll get to that we right after the sponsors. Idiot? We're, we're okay. going to get to that right after the sponsors. So go to mybookie.com promo code drinking bros for sports. You get 50% back, uh, promo code, uh, drinking bros casino. You get 150%. That doubles your deposit. 150%, uh, at mybookie.com. Next up, we got killcliffcbd.com. Best CBD in the biz, 25 milligrams in every single can, 30% off with the promo code Drinking Bros. They ship everywhere, and it is the tastiest shit on the planet. 15 calories, no carbs, no sugars. You will also not piss hot if you have a drug test, if you're a first responder. Look, man, nothing relieves those joints better than CBD. There's 25 milligrams in every single can. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, promo code Drinker Bros, 30% off and free shipping. It knocks it down to like $2.50 a can. Best shit in the business. My dad fucking threw out his back on Easter at our house. <laughs> First thing he grabbed for it was one of those grape kill clip fucking Did he get cans. in a fight with the Easter Bunny? No, he got in a fight with my uh, six-year-old on a swing, which means there was no fight whatsoever. He just fell down on his mm. own. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry. Jeez. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, Jerry. Um, but he took some Kill Cliff CBDs back in the game. Uh, go to killcliffcbd.com today. Promo code Drinker Bros, 30% off and free shipping. Three amazing flavors. Bert, I want to ask you about your, uh, 
uh, Bison Union. What are you What are you guys doing online right now? Bison Union. Well, I'll I'll set up a code for Drinking Bros too. So Drinking Bros, folks, I'll set that up. It'll just be Drinking Bros, and I think it might still be there. I don't okay. think we've ever changed it. Cool. Just Drinking Bros for twenty percent off. I'll 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 make sure that that's on as soon as this pod before as soon as we're done. Yeah, I'll make sure that's set up. But twenty percent off at at Drinking Bros. Because we uh, love Bison code, Union here, dude. We, we wear your shit all the time. I think, dude. Man, you guys have. It's Dan not and I have guys, worn but... these hats for weeks now. At mm-hmm. this point, like we always wear. You guys have been wearing them for a, for two years. Yeah. And it's not just you guys. There's like I said, there's so many drinking bros, and this to me, yeah, I'm not here to fucking sell shit. Like we'll we'll be just fine. But man, it is the support we get from the drinking bros community is pretty pretty phenomenal. It's just, it's not pretty phenomenal. It is. It's just fucking great. We, we, so, but we genuinely love your company. Like for real, we've got a bunch of friends with different shit and it's like, we always wear your shit all the time uh, for free. Yeah, I know you guys do. And I love we you guys love it. for it, man. It, it just, it's, it's not, it's good to see you guys, you know, just, you guys just support us. And if we can do anything back to support the community and support drinking bros, I, we're all over it. Awesome. Hey, so we'll do- yeah, go to, go to bisonunion.com <laughs> promo code drinking bros, 20% off 20% off. It's still 20% off, right? Yeah, it is. And I think that code has kind of been there just behind the scenes, you know, rock. And I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to check with Candace. Good fucking boss. Rock it. Look, good luck finding uh, better dudes, products, shirts and everything. Uh, Hats for men than at bisonunion.com. I want to hear your thoughts on Biden here. Um, I, I can't like it. I get anxiety very rarely, but I get anxiety listening to this fucking guy talk like you see the the entire democratic base everybody wants this new change and change and hope so what do they do they literally nominate another <laughs> yeah. old fucking white guy and this guy if you watch him <clears throat> talk mm-hmm. and can't tell that he's got early stage dementia and he's losing his fucking faculties you're a fucking moron if you support this guy and vote for him to be the to run the most powerful country in the history of the entire world you are a fucking part of the problem. Like this guy is not all there. I'm pretty sure that that's it, man. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but holy fuck. I can't stand watching the guy because he gives me anxiety going, how the fuck did yeah. half our country is supporting this fucking guy just because they don't like the current president. They're going to support some yeah. fucking guy that's got dementia. How do you he's think, not right. How do you think he's handling, um, having to wear a mask all the time, given that he's his signature move is to sniff people. Yeah. Sniffer. I, he's cutting the nose out. I heard <laughs> cutting the nose out of the mask. So you can still get a sniff in those well, photos, the, the, the photos of him, like somebody put out a <laughs> God, I don't know what news outlet I just was looking at online and they had like 60 photos. I've never seen more uncomfortable women in my entire life, except when women around Dan, like that's it. Like <laughs> this fucking guy sniffing and grabbing people from behind. It is what it is, man. There's no way he's going to beat Trump. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to start going win. to democratic campaign rallies and, and just start doing that. Grabbing women by just the start shoulder sniffing people? and sniff their hair. Yeah. They're like, Hey, I learned it from you, dad. <laughs> I learned it Goodbye. from watching you. Um, let me, let me ask you this. Unless he nominates Michelle Ob- uh, Michelle Obama is, is is VP. He can't win, like right. There's no possible I don't, way. I don't think. I don't think Michelle Obama would take that position. She's I don't not either. stupid. It's a, it's yeah. like Condoleezza Rice, and I'm not saying that because they're both black women, but th- she's too smart for that. She's just like Condoleezza Rice. People have asked her for 15 years now to run, and she says no. I don't need the he- like. It's not. I'm not going to do that. I right. think Michelle Obama has already done that. She's got two kids that are college like i think she's too and by the way i met her uh i'm a republican through and through i grew up in a republican household that's not why i'm a republican i just support those values it's it's who i am but you met I michelle met obama i did i got to go to the white house and i got to meet her and i gotta say man she's one of she is she's a class act she has a great sense of humor i think in the grand scheme of things it's like her relationship with george w bush like they're good friends and they're, they're, they're polar opposites and everything about them. Mm-hmm. But she, she, I was just blown away. I came in there going, Oh, big whoop. I, I get to meet the Obama. It's like, wow, uh, whatever. But when I met her, she's very engaging. She's got a good personality. And I think she's a good human being, 
but I think she's too smart. She'd never fucking run, and I don't think she'd run with that guy. I don't either. I think there's. Yeah. I think I don't think there's any love lost between the Obamas and Joe Biden. I don't think. I don't think they wanted him to be nominated. I don't think they want him to win. Um, uh, that's my opinion. Which did you is mean worth fucking nothing? It is. It's worth a lot. Don't don't downplay it. Um, <laughs> what about Barack? Did you meet Barack? He walked through the room, and <laughs> that was about it. He walked through. It was a function that was not him as the highlight. So he walked through the room and. It is what it is. I'm not. I'm, I, I'm see, not a fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to. I, I'm a fan that he made it the president. Yeah, I, you know, I, I will always respect the office of the president, no matter who's in it. But I'm not. I'm not a fan of his. I didn't vote for him. I wouldn't vote for him again. I think he caused more divide in this country than any president in the last 60 years. I just. It is what it is. I don't. I'm not a fan. I think if I met them, uh, I would definitely hit on Michelle just to see what he would do. Dude, like, she's a beast. Like very openly, she's taller than Dan. I think. No, she's five. She is huge. She's five. She's five ten. Yeah, but with heels on, she's got you. Yeah, no, she's well, yeah, fine. she's tall. That's yeah. that's fine. She's a I'm big still woman. I'm still gonna hit on her right in front of Barack Obama because I want to see what because he, he's a pussy, right? And I want to I want to see how he would react to that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> could you imagine what a big dick move that would be? A hit on the president's Just wife in front of the up. president. I so I'm, a, I'm able to separate these people. Like I remember separ- separate the the person from the politics. Where I'm yeah. sure if you had a fucking beer with Barack Obama, right, you'd probably have an enjoyable beer, enjoyable dinner, whatever you did with the guy. But I don't like his politics whatsoever. And it's probably the same way with Michelle, from what it sounds like, from what you said. Of like, well, being a president is the yeah, same super. as being in any and being in a political party. Like you show up to the party and everybody has all these assumptions about who you are as a human being because of what the conglomerate believes you know what i mean yeah like oh you're a fucking republican you must be right or you're a democrat you must be a fucking socialist it's like it doesn't really work that way you kind of get lumped in with all the shit people believe then when you become president it, there's no way for one human being to without force govern 320 million people you know what i mean yeah so he he or she relies on all these other fucking people and all these other people have their agendas and whatever the fuck else and it all kind of get gets mashed into one thing and then presented as the Barack Obama administration, when in reality he probably had control of five percent of that shit, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's it. There's so many stop gaps. There's so many other people. There's so many approvals. Like, there's not. I agree with you, Dan, 100. This I think is why people... I'm more critical, by the way, of Obama than a lot of other people are, in a real way, because the stuff that he actually could have done, that he had like literal influence over, he fucking he didn't. It sucked yeah. at it. Yeah. Like they yeah. had a they had a he, super he ma- they had a super majority. And they could only pass, like their dream ever since Hillary Clinton back in the early 90s was to pass a health care reform act that would uh, cut back on health insurance, administrative fees, and all that bullshit. No, they doubled them. Uh, and to add women's rights into the whole situation, which they didn't do because they gave a caveat to anybody that runs a religious organization, you can pretty much back out of providing birth control and uh, all this other bullshit. So everything he actually... That could have been part of it. Could have been an executive order, right? He could have legalized marijuana. He could have, with a single stroke of the pen, legalized marriage equality, gay marriage. Yeah. And he didn't do any of that shit that he had the opportunity to put himself forward and do. All he did was let his administration people do fucking dumb shit over and over. Which, yeah, I, I was shocked that he couldn't fix his own city because he's a Chicago guy, and it's like, man, that that city has not changed. The South Side of Chicago, fuck, what, 50, 60 people are dying every single month from shootouts. Yeah, it's getting and it gets worse and worse in the politics, like the entire state. It's just it's becoming one of the worst states in the United <laughs> States to live in. And I have I have buddies that live there. I'm sure you guys do, too, that yeah. I talk to weekly that are just like, I got to get out. It's, and that's half the reason I moved to Wyoming, because I, I think and I've said it to Dan and I were just in L.A. a few weeks back together. And I said it to Dan, like, you know, for me at this point. And by the way, there's a lot of chaos going on, but there's never been a better time to be alive and be an American. There just hasn't. And people ask me, like, well, guys getting out of the military, just somebody who's not happy with their job. The answer is pretty simple. Don't fucking work for anybody. Work for yourself. And if you can do that, and if you can't do that right now, figure out a way to do it in a year, two years, three years. But the two things I recommend to people, because they're not making any more land, if you really want to be free in the United States, buy fucking property and land and own your own business. Now, you'll never really own your own business because you still have to pay taxes to the fucking government, payroll, property taxes on the building you own. Mm-hmm. you, you got to pay 8,000 different taxes. 
if you own a piece of land, you actually don't really own it. The United States government does because you have to pay property taxes on it every year. <laughs> right. You have to have insurance on it to run a business on it or have a ranch. You, you, just, you get bent over so many different ways, but the closest way in my mind, and I see a lot of people buy dumb shit and people buy 5,000 <laughs> square foot houses and cul-de-sacs and I'm not trashing anybody, but rethink your model and live outside of town a half an hour and buy 100 acres. Because that 100 acres 10 years from now is going to be worth 10 times what you paid for it. It's just simple, common math. Like, it's just simple math. We're making a lot more people, but we're not making more land. Buy land. And the other one, I don't care what it takes. It's better to work 100 hours a week for yourself than it is to work 40 hours a week for some other motherfucker that's getting rich. I say it every fucking day to somebody. People come to me and they'll bitch about their jobs. And it's like, do you work for somebody else? Yes. Why? Well, because I need money. Right. So go start your own fucking company. Start your company doing the same thing that company does. If you can with it, without a non-compete or anything like that, don't do anything illegal. But don't stick around and work for somebody if you're unfucking happy. And I think a lot of people focus on politics and rely on the government and this and that. Oh, the man's trying to fuck me. I'm pretty sure if you really look at things, you're <laughs> fucking yourself more than anybody else is if you go to work every day and you're unhappy. Dan and I have had this conversation no less than a hundred times in the last four years. Mm. Like you just, it doesn't matter where you work, Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. or fucking an executive at IBM. If you get in your car every morning and you drive to work and you're going, fuck, I wish I was doing something else. Then go in and fucking piss on your boss's desk and say, I'm fucking out of here. Save money and wait for that day and do it, do it right. But I'll get off my soapbox, but you know, people will trash America and Democrat this, and I do a little bit of that and Republican that. If you're unhappy right now or you're broke in the United States of America, you're doing something fucking wrong. Stop having kids if you can't afford them. Work harder. Don't fucking drink alcohol if you can't afford to fucking put food on your table. You know, if you can't put gas in your fucking car, don't spend your money on stupid shit. Don't buy a two ninety nine <laughs> fucking Netflix movie. Fucking put gas in your car. But, I'm, you know, it's a little bit harsh, but if you're fucking broke right now and that broke isn't on forwarding your life by buying property, starting a business, going into debt on inventory in your new company, then you're probably fucked up. Like, fix your shit. Yeah, I mean, it's easier. Though, I mean, what are your guys' my, thoughts on that? No, I, I agree with that. You guys both I, own your you guys own your own companies yeah, now. Yeah. You know, are you happier now than you were two years ago? Both of you guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it first, if you don't mind, because I've, I've had my own company since uh, 06, right? I've had a production company. Now, Dan and I, in, you know, in the last year, have a media company together. So we, you know, obviously don't have to work for anybody. Uh, I also write my own books. I don't have to work for anybody, all that other shit. Um, I will say this. It, the hours are more than you'll expect. So when I opened up my own production company in 06, I thought, oh, great, man. I own my own company. I'm my own boss, all that other shit. I fuck. I work in 60, 70 hour weeks nonstop, right? Double the time that I used to work for anybody else. But it was more satisfying because it was, I was building my own company. However much money I made was determined on me and nobody else and, and vice versa. Um, I, I would say the biggest thing is be prepared to work more hours than you're actually working. However, those hours will be more satisfying because it's for you. It's for your family. You're the one that's, that's doing it. Um, sometimes it is hard, uh, you know, in particular with money. Sometimes money is tight and you have to cut corners on certain things. Like, for example, us, this media company mm -hmm. is scaling so fast that we are having a hard time keeping up with equipment and all this other stuff. Um, because, look, uh, even during this interview, one of the cameras overheated. We've been going so many hours since this pandemic started trying to give shows to people on Ross Patterson Revolution and Drinking Bros every single day of the week, except for Sundays, essentially. Um, that equipment is failing us and all this other shit. So we're constantly having meetings after work of like, all right, what's the most vital equipment? How do we get you know X, Y, and Z? Uh, but again, <laughs> it's, it's the most satisfying work you'll ever have is not working for somebody else. The most miserable times I've uh, ever been is when I was doing projects for other people or working for other people. And that goes all the way back to high school. Um, we even working at Papa John's for a fucking manager or something in high school where it's like, man, yes, the most miserable times in my life were working for someone else. I don't know what your experience is, but that is mine personally. Um, yeah. I mean, so you're a hundred percent correct, Bert. It, it's, 
I, I guess it's it's about the amount of effort. Like people who are property owners, if you get to a certain level, uh, then I guess it doesn't really matter anymore because you're so rich. But um, if you're like a mid-level or low-level property owner, you own 10 or 100 acres or something like that, you get butt-fucked by the United States government on yes. a regular basis. If, yeah. you, if you own a house in California mm-hmm. or Texas, uh, because they have – like they don't have state income tax, their property tax is kind of fucking high. Yeah, they're really high. Um, su- su- super high. Yeah. Yes. So if you yes. if you're one of those people, I mean, you can see exactly that. That's a good uh, metaphor for what it's like to work for somebody else. Because even what you own, you don't own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think the idea of property tax beyond the point of sale is the most asinine shit I've ever heard of in my life. Like I, I don't. I'm, yeah, I don't, it's, it's really it's really a scam. It is. I, mean, I don't. It, I don't believe is. in this. Uh, all taxation is theft nonsense because i think libertarianism is reductive and 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 pretty pretty uh empty it's hollow but uh the idea of being taxed on the property that you own that you maintain unless the government is doing something to maintain that land and you have you're paying them back that's one thing (laughs) right but if you're just paying i i'm paying you just to exist that's it get fucked yeah like that should be abolished right goddamn now like and, that, and to in me, particular, that's that Texas, that Texas, th- there's no state taxes. So that's how they, that's how they kind of get you is we're going to give you higher property taxes. Well, it's the same thing in California, though. So are, there's a moratorium on certain types of new statewide taxes. Mm-hmm. So instead of doing that, what they do is they keep passing. And Bert, you know that you know this yeah. from being a homeowner there. They pass a parcel tax mm-hmm. every fucking yeah. year. There's like two or three parcel taxes. They get passed. And people are like, oh, it's people vote for them because it's like, oh, it's like two bucks an acre. Yeah, but when you have 15 of those goddamn things going and you have 1,000 acres, that's a lot of fucking money that just gets taken away from you and put into whatever the fuck. Like, I don't mind paying taxes to a certain degree because I want to live in a country that has good health care, not health insurance. Health insurance is a scam. 35 to 60% of all the money spent on health care in this country is spent on administrative fees for health insurance, not on actual health care. Combine that with the pharmaceutical industry butt fucking us on procedures and drugs. Oh, that, God. That's a whole the fucking worst. scam, right? Yeah, it's nonsense. Um, but I don't. I I want good health care. I want educated people. I don't want to live in a country full of dum dums. Like we should, if we want to be the best country in the world, we should spend our money on that, right? And not on bullshit. And I feel like we can do it for whatever price we want because we don't have to import any of this. Like it's not like we have to import education or health care. That stuff exists. Yeah, it exists, and and to your point about the the, the taxes, like you mentioned something earlier about owning a, a four thousand or five thousand square foot cul de sac house, right? A friend of mine was living in one in Texas, and I was over at his house. I was like, "What do you pay for property taxes on on this?" You know? Oh God, I bet you paid eleven or twelve thousand dollars a year, fifteen thousand a year. Yeah, and I was per, like, perfect example. And I was like, "Hey man, so you know you're paying a mortgage?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I go, "The property taxes on top of that," and he's like, "It's about another twelve hundred dollars a month." Twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month, and it's like you said. What just to exist, like on a house you've already bought, you're paying twelve hundred dollars on top of that. That's someone else's rent anywhere else in the country, and you're paying that after you own the house in Texas. And I was like, motherfucker. Yeah, I um, mean, we know what we get for when we pay into Medicare. We know what we get when we pay into FICA. We know what we get when we pay into Social Security. Yeah, but payroll tax, we have no idea where that money goes. No, we have, bro, that's we have, and that, that's we payroll have very little taxes, say. Bane, well. I'm like for. For a small business owner, payroll tax is the bane of my existence. Like, yeah, you pay your employee, your employee has to pay taxes. Yep. You pay yourself, you have to pay taxes, and then you have a payroll tax on top of that. It absolutely, there is no doubt in my mind. If they got rid of payroll tax, there the unemployment rate in the United States would be close to zero. Yeah. It, it'd be, it, it's never going to be zero because there's always going to be shitbags out there that don't want to work. But right. payroll tax gets me so fired up and I don't want to just totally bash the government. For instance, you know, we just, we bought a piece of property out here to run our Buffalo on in the center of Northern Wyoming and there's BLM land next to us. And we have some BLM land on our property that we bought. What does, that, what does that stand for? It. I'm sorry. Bureau of land management. And so like it, say, I'm just going to use this hypothetically. Say you buy 10,000 acres in Wyoming and there's a chunk of BLM land in the center of it that the government or state owns that's sitting there. That's actually public land. But because it's landlocked, if somebody wants to come hut on it, they'd have to fly in with a helicopter or land on it with a, an ultralight or something. It just doesn't happen. But what the government does, so say, for instance, our place that we bought has – and by the way, 
we didn't pay cash for it. We're not rich. We walked into a small fucking bank, first north, you know, first northern bank right here in Sheridan, a, a, a normal bank, and went through a six month process of our finances being vetted, everything, our jobs, our companies. We got everything turned upside down, and they looked under every rock and came back and said, "We will lend you this money at this rate." We literally walked into a bank and 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 bought a piece of land that's ours, and. You know, with that, there's some BL. My point is, if you have good credit and you make money and you're smart with your money, you can walk into a small bank. I'm not talking about a Chase or a, a Wells Fargo. Walk into a small local bank and get a loan for buying a piece of property. Like you could do that. You pay that off. It'll be worth 10 to 15 times what it is now, 10 years from now, because they're not making more property. But so, our say say we have a square of land and there's BLM right in the middle of it. For instance, we have 440 acres of BLM on the property we bought. It's BLM state land mm -hmm. that's public, but it's landlocked. And our rate for that 440 acres, which is a pretty pretty nice piece of, like that's a lot of property. Uh, it's not a lot of property, Ted Turner-wise, but if you're average everyday person <laughs> like Tyler and myself yeah. and Candace and the gang, like it's, it's, it's a lot of property, but we pay a dollar an acre per year. So we get 440 acres of BLM on a 10-year lease with them that we pay $440 a year on to have 440 acres. Like, that's pretty incredible. And it's ours. Yeah. We can run animals on it. Our buffalo can go on it and graze. It's ours. You know, it's pub It's not ours to own, but it's ours to use. And a dollar an acre, that's one of the ways the government, you know, in a state like Wyoming, that's an ag state, does people right. Because you might be bordered – to 5,000 acres of BLM land. And if you have the most land on it or you're grandfathered into it with a 10 year lease, you get that for a dollar an acre, $10,000 a year. You got 10,000 acres. You can run cows on. Do you it's remember? Really... Yeah, that's great. Bert, do you remember in the army when, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but every, every fucking, I think it was October maybe, or some shit like that. It was, it was right around the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, all the admin dorks would come around with those sign-up sheets where you were basically forced to pay into a charity for the year. Yeah, what was it called? And you had to pick a charity on a list of like 200. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, God. But I feel like taxes in America should work that way. Um, like you should you get, get to, to choose. You get to pick where your tax money goes. Yeah, I mean, and look, there's certain things that are uh, non-negotiable, like education and health care, for example. Like obviously we have to pay into that. Um, and social security, I imagine if it's something that you for sure get something out of, but the rest of the shit, like cosmetic things, for example, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, there, there's a, there's a myriad of fucking, uh, uh, different <laughs> examples of that, but there's certain stuff that I feel like we should be able to decide. You, we, we've outgrown the ability to do it through representative democracy, right? Because one person in a district, one congressperson in a district could have, I don't know, a fucking 500,000 people under them, 300,000. A hundred, even fifty thousand. How does that one person represent the will of fifty thousand people? I don't think it's possible, right? You, you don't. And the problem you have with politicians like that is that person wakes up and is having a fight with their wife or marriage problems or <laughs> money problems or something else. Just and he takes he or she takes that shit to work just like everybody else does. So a fucking senator dickface has a bad fucking day. Guess what? All his constituents are gonna have a bad fucking day too. It's right. completely emotional. It's opinion based. There's so much. Tell me why we live in a country where politicians like Nancy Pelosi are millionaires and Bernie yeah. Sanders and Joe Biden. How in the fuck does your average everyday butcher that Ross goes to get meat from make less money than a politician that has millions, not just millions, those three people I just named tens of millions of dollars and they've been career politicians. That right there should be punishable by prison. Like how do you have so much money? Yeah. If you're a politician and you're living better than your constituents, you need to fucking reevaluate your fucking life. Dan's got, and Dan's you got a perfect. You shouldn't be in the job. Dan's got a perfect idea for it: is to put term limits on it. Yeah, I mean, look, if you go go watch the movie. This, this is, I'm sure there are better examples that are shorter, but go watch the movie Lincoln and look at some of the interactions between the different types of politicians that are in that movie. And I don't think they did it yeah. on purpose. Uh, for example, there was a guy who came into the president's office to some random fuckface who's petitioning the president of the United States to do X, Y, and Z. Like, look, obviously we can't do that anymore. But uh, the person that he was referring to was a congressman that was just some guy 
Like, oh, yeah, I know fucking some dude with some weird nickname that has to do with living in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, everybody knows him. He's a doctor in town. Right. You know what I mean? And look, we've outgrown a lot of that stuff. We can't. We, 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 don't, we don't all have a personal relationship with whomever is representing us in Congress. But um, you see the difference between them and the people who were bitterly divided in the chambers of the House. Right. Like the one guy was super excited to become postmaster. That was what he was going to get. I think mm -hmm. it was Walton Goggins' character, actually. Yeah. He was become postmaster for voting to outlaw slavery. That was his. That was the trade, right? Mm -hmm. and that was a big deal for him. And then you see the guys, like the the guy from South Carolina, for example. I can't remember his name, but the congressman from South Carolina was super, just a politician. He was a piece of shit, like Bert referred to earlier. So it's interesting to see the dichotomy there. But yeah, to to your point, uh, congressional and senatorial term limits have to happen. Like you can't, we can't have these people that are in Congress for forty years, yeah. thirty years anymore. No, so they, nothing just, will change. Nothing can't. will change. No, it won't. But I, I think, I think, and you guys, you know, weigh in on this. But I, I think we're pretty close to not a revolution like the original revolution. But I think we're getting pretty close to a revolution. People are tired of bullshit. Yeah, they really are. I think on both sides of the and man, I, I and I'll be the first one to admit I, I I will say I'm a Republican. I vote Republican if the the candidate is the right person and I agree with them. But I also love Democrats that get up in the morning and put their boots on and they go to work. Like I just if you work hard and love America, I love you. But I, I think we're getting close to across the board. People are tired of nonsense. I think I think this coronavirus is bringing people together in that sense. And I think people are all starting to go, hey, I mean, I think this coronavirus thing, again, it's not a good thing. Anytime people are dying, it's not a good thing. And I, you know, I'm, I don't want to be insensitive about it. I think it's been overblown. And, but I think it's also making people really realize that the media, we all know it before the media is pretty messed up, but I think people are already starting to realize that politicians are super fucked up and we can't be at their mercy. We just can't. And I'm not a, like I'm not a revolution guy. I'm not going to get a militia together and try and take over the Capitol building. But be, I think it'd be great if you did. State. We support you. You know, God, that'd be great. <laughs> well, here's the problem. Here, here's the problem with the idea. I know there's a lot of people out there that fucking tongue in cheek talk about revolution and shit. But the problem with revolution in this country is this is how it's going to go. People and it's already happened for, to a large degree. People have tuned out from the political discourse because they're tired of bullshit. It's like, leave me the fuck alone. Let me live my life and go on about it, you know, the way I want to. And I think a lot of people are like that, whether they're right, left, libertarian or whatever the fuck, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly libertarian, just want to be left alone. So what happens when there are people who are literally in charge in a way that you can't really do anything about and then you turn, you tune out is that they just get more and more powerful. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in a lot of ways. You have a group of people who are tired of being told what to do and a group of people who only know how to tell other people what to do, but which, by the way, they don't follow their own goddamn advice or the law right. most of the time. So what happens is you develop a fucking ruling class, and then you develop a fucking people who don't want to pay taxes to a ruling class anymore. And by the way, that's how this fucking country started. Right. So, uh, you know, it's... People say that there's no chance of a real revolution in this country because of the size and the era that we live in and all that stuff, but that is a recipe for disaster, my man. Uh, you get a bunch of fucking people together that, for whatever reason, dislike what the government's doing, and for the most part, you don't see... Um, you're not going to see a poll for a Republican or a Democrat nationwide for a president where they have a 50% or greater approval rating ever. Not a real one. Yeah. Because it just doesn't work that way. People are generally dissatisfied. I mean, if you look at the approval rating for Congress at any given time, it's in the 20s. Yeah, and you look at the, the ones they put out for Trump. They're like, oh, he's only at 46% or whatever it is. It's like, hey, man, you'll never give it a, a, get it above 50. It is rare unless yeah. there is some form of war going on and we're winning. That you will get it above that. So uh, these polls are fucking dog shit. Congress to me. approval rating right now is twenty two percent. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and what would you say? It's twenty twenty two percent. Twenty yeah, two and the disapprove rating is seventy four. And I'm just looking back historically. Um, the last time it was thirty or higher. <laughs> All right, it was August. Of 2009. 1980. 
Ah, 2009. 2009. What it happened was a in decade 2009? Ago. Yeah. Uh, it was the uh, that was kind of the end of the recession. Affordable Care Act. The recession ended. Yeah. Um, gotcha. All that. Yeah. All that. Obama announced that they were we were leaving Iraq. There was a lot of stuff going on there. How are you staying gotcha. in shape, by the way, Bert? You look thinner. I've actually lost 21 pounds since this quarantine thing started. No, no I don't shit. normally How? wear sweatshirts, but I just started cooking at home every night. I'm not joking. Like I haven't. I think I'm on like 50 something days of just just eating at home, just cooking cooking on a, on the stove at home. Me- I cook. Meanwhile, I get takeout twice have you a day. Uh, no, <laughs> wait, I, I haven't gained shit. any weight. And you actually. probably get Uber, don't you? Uh, no, we use Postmates. Postmates. My man. They're a sponsor. Oh, Postmates. Oh. Well, we don't. I'm in Wyoming, so I apologize, Postmates, if you're listening. Like, I tell me about Postmates. <laughs> Postmates no, is really, the best. They they're they the best. Sheridan doesn't have that stuff. There's there, there's not Uber Eats, Postmates. Oh, any of that. gotcha, but, gotcha. But Postmates, what is Postmates? Postmates, uh, you, you can order food or drinks or liquor, anything on you know online. You on, can order on the shit app. from Walgreens or CVS, from Walgreen, you want. Uh, whatever, and then somebody will just drive it to your house. Yep. Uh, just through an app. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to download it. Maybe yeah, they do have it here. I'll have to download it. Yeah, da- download it. Give it a give it a gozies, Bert. Um, it's uh, use yeah, the promo so, code Drinking Bros. You get a hundred dollars free delivery. Boom. I like it. I like free. Free delivery. Yeah, I just uh, for, for me, I just I started cooking at home and lost twenty pounds, and I also shaved my beard, which makes me look like I'm you know a baby faced kid. But um, but that's man, just there was a good chance. It was a good time and a good opportunity to just eat. Just eat normal, healthy shit. I, I'm getting, you know, good meat, you know, all game meat, processed meat. Like when I say processed, I mean butchered meat mm-hmm. um, and just eating right. And then the other one is just, you know, we're doing workout. You can't go to a gym here. Yeah, you know, I, I can't here. wait for that, which is this fucking weird to me. But this whole thing, that's the kind of weird thing to me. Like I, I walk into Home Depot to get a bathroom fixture for a building at the ranch and it's like, there's 800 fucking people in there and my fucking yeah, gym's closed. I know. And it's like, <laughs> it, it, I get it, man. I, I what non-essential and essential, but that's the other thing. I think, you know, that's people sitting on a, a table and everybody's fucking trying to be the smartest person in the room. And they specifically said like coffee shops, why can't my coffee shop be open? But fucking home Depot can be, you know, right. I, I understand it's home Depot. People need supplies like that, but does that make sense? What I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's you, just, need, you need you need fuel to, to build shit, so you need coffee to build shit. So I, you, do, you, you can look at just, all of this stuff as essential. To be honest with you, it's essential that it's, small it's, businesses still operate and don't yeah. go out of fucking business. Anything that that's puts essential well, to me. Anything yeah. that puts bread on the table of Americans, particularly those that have the least opportunity, is essential to me. Yeah, you guys said it right. Every business is essential to somebody. I mean, not every business, but every business is essential to somebody. And it's just, you know, like the gym that I go to, I'm in a small town here. The gym owner, she's going to have to give back everybody their auto pay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For two months. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, car insurance. And most people in Sheridan are going to say, hey, don't give me my money back. Like, I'm not going to make her pay me back. But it's just weird to me that I, like a gym that's 24 hours that's open, like, hey, have wipes and have machines. Wear your fucking mask while you work out. But, don't go nuts and just shut everything down. And I'm looking at all these statistics where people are like, if 98% of the country just stayed indoors, this thing would be gone in two weeks. If 72% stayed indoors, it'll be gone in seven weeks. If it's fucking bullshit, man, the thing is out there. It's, it's, you're there's not, no, there's no it's gone. Gonna lay dormant. It's a virus. There's yeah, no vaccine. Yeah. It's a virus. If, if we wait, eight weeks and let everybody out, the same thing's going to happen. Yeah. Like it's not going away. It will yeah. immediately happen I, again. I agree. It, it will. There's and only heard just... there's only herd immunity through two there's two types of ways to gain herd immunity. One is through exposure and the other one is through a yes. vaccine. Well, we don't have a vaccine, so the idea that we're getting back to work faster by keeping everybody shut in, no. All we're doing is prolonging the inevitable. We yeah. either come up with a vaccine and soon or we just let people get back to normal and we deal with the fucking losses from yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. That that's the well, only two that's options. Like... You know, I just watching. Is it Fauci? Is that how you pronounce the guy's name? Fauci. Dan, you'd know. Fauci. 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 I watched Fauci. him last Fa- night Fal- Fal- say he's now starting the conversation of is it going to say, be safe for people to go vote in November at a public voting facility? And this is where it's going to get really complicated. You know, like, oh, again, yeah. you can't the, the basic the one basic right that we still have that the government can't fucking take from us. They're going to take from us. 
And again, for me, I'll take my chances getting coronavirus to go fucking vote. Same. I, I really will. I, I will be sick for seven weeks, diarrhea, lung problems. As long as I can vote, you can't take my vote from me, please. Yeah. You know, it's like you, that's the one thing besides shitting and pissing that that the government can't take from you is voting. And it's they're about to take it from us. And right. that's where I'm I don't like, think Man, Trump's going to let it happen. Weird. I don't think Trump's <laughs> going to let it happen at all. I, he's already voiced very, very publicly. Hey, man, we're fucking voting in November. Like, well, I've we're not doing yeah. mail ins. We're, we're going to the polls like, you know, they just did it in Wisconsin last week. Everybody seemed to be fine after that. I think we'll be fine in November. I, and I think most of this is going to not disappear, but uh, go dormant, especially once the summer uh, heats up. Um, you know, that's just me personally. They, they were saying Fauci, Dr. Fauci was saying that uh, it might come back in the stages of winter, in particular January, February of next year. Um, but, you know, same as the flu season. It's going to come back in November. It's going to come season. back. There's it, no it question just, about that. It, like, it so the, I, the idea that we would keep everything shut down until, I don't know, let's say June, right? Right. Then July, August, September happen. We get three months for the virus to propagate itself again because that is exactly what a fucking virus does, mm-hmm. by the way. Unless there's a fucking, like, the, I, I, this is so goddamn stupid. There's no, <laughs> I'm with you. There's, there's no, if we quarantine for fucking two months, like you said, let's say 100% of people stayed at home. Right or ninety eight, but there's two percent that the cops and nurses and shit that have to go to work. Ninety eight percent of people stay at home. This thing is quote unquote gone in two weeks. That virus is not gone. It's never gone. No virus at large has ever been a hundred percent eradicated ever. Like even not that it's a a viral infection necessarily like this, but polio could come back if we stop. Like if it if it just showed up again somewhere, it would start to propagate itself really fast. So that take it took years to get rid of that shit. So the idea that we can shut down our entire economy down for our, for two or three months and then this just goes away and doesn't come back, it's not reality. Right. Right? So what are we doing no, by not. shutting it down? And think, like, what's the cost-benefit analysis going on here? Yeah, I, look, I, we've talked about this numerous times. Um, I don't think it's worth shutting down. I hope, you know, they stick to kind of what they're saying in May is opening, you know, certain states, kind of a slow opening. It's not like turning the lights on, but, you know... I. Look, obviously, L.A. and New York, some of the hot spots, they'll probably be closed a little longer. But let's start to reopen the rest of the country here and uh, and get back to work, is my opinion. So let me ask you guys this, because, I again, I'm on social media a lot just because the job, just like you guys are. And, and I like social media. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know, people try and bastardize it. It's like, hey, you like looking at other people's lives on your fucking phone and it makes you happy, fucking do it. If, if you don't, then fuck off. But – when I watch social media, you get a lot of people that get emotional and pissed off and it's like, Hey, heart disease kills more people in America than anything else across right. the board period. Right. But we're not, we don't restrict, we don't shut down McDonald's. We don't shut down. And I'm not picking on McDonald's just specifically, but we don't shut down the food industry of processed refined, sh- ref- refined food that kills you. You know why, why don't we do that or driving deaths or alcoholism and drinking What's your guys' take on that? Because I see a lot of posts. I don't weigh in on political posts anymore because it's just not – it's not worth my time to fucking argue with idiots. Yeah. But but what's your take on that? The, well, well, not you know, every death is comparing, equal. Yeah, not, not every death is that's, equal. That's One, that. two is, you know, if you look at the revised numbers, and I'm just going off of what Dr. Fauci said as of Friday, we're looking at roughly 61,000, uh, and that number keeps getting revised down over and over again. You're starting to head into numbers of a really bad flu season at this point. And I mean, uh, 2000, was it 2016, 68,000 people died of the flu? Yeah. So it's kind of where we are with this. Yeah. But that's with, I mean, a good point to make there is that is with all the the measures that have been taken. Right. Like otherwise we probably would be looking at 2 million, but look, I know this is, it's, we're on drinking bro. So I'm just going to fucking talk here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't give two fucks about old people in general. (laughs) Um, not to say that their lives aren't valuable to them and their families. Uh, what I mean by that is if if you have to, and we've talked about this before, if I have to run into a building that's on fire and there's a three-year-old and 80 year old, if the 80 year old is my dad, I'm saving the three-year-old. Sorry, dad, but you had your time and some younger people are at risk. Absolutely. But how, how, no one, I've not heard a single person explain to me and you're damn sure not going to hear it out of Washington because they're all fucking geriatrics too. Like, 
How can you, as a fucking ethical human being that's been put in charge of other human beings to protect yourself and those like you, put the rest of the country at economic risk when we know for a fucking fact that mortality rates, particularly for children, go way the fuck up as recessions happen and mm-hmm. poverty increases? Right. Like, you, it is not a theory at this point. It is a one-for-one trade. You're trading this fucking 75-year-old's life for this five-year-old's life in the fucking inner city or in the fucking rural community. That is a one-for-one trade, and you're willing to make that because why exactly? I don't get it. Yeah, and I mean, we've talked at nauseum about this, Bert, on, on this show because it's I think all three of us are uh, are in agreement on this. And, um, yeah. you know, I, it's not going to change. Somebody's going to bitch about something one way or the other. And um, I, m- my personal hope is that everything reopens here in the next couple weeks. I'm looking at a May 1st date, and I hope Trump is sort of sticking to that. Because that's, that's where he has it at now. I know L.A., Los Angeles in particular, has already moved to, to May 15th. I know Cuomo up in New York is, is probably looking at June for New York. Uh, New, New York is in a much worse state than the rest of, of the country. But uh, me personally, I, I hope this sticks to May, and I'd like to see things get back to some sort of normalcy. Uh, speaking of normalcy, this is where we get to the uh, drinking bro of the week. This was submitted by Eric McDougal from Oregon, who's been a Drinking Bros member for two years now. Um, And he'd like to nominate uh, Lieutenant Colonel Arlie William Bill uh, Dean Juneau. It's a lot of 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 names names going on there. Sounds like a serial killer. Yeah, uh, it says Bill died last year. (laughs) Well, uh, we we, yeah, we geez, never know these, Dan. Dan. What a piece of shit yeah, you are, What a piece Dan. of shit. Um, he could have been a steroid God. Killer. Bill died last year in a tragic accident on Mount Rainier in Washington State. He served our country quietly on classified missions all over the world. He was truly the ultimate gray man. His biggest successes in life were built on the foundation of being a good human being. Uh, people flocked to be around him because he was so amazingly talented and kind many of my greatest childhood memories were made with him and that is why i am nominating bill dean rest easy bro cheers fuckers uh, what's his name again cheers. bill dean what bill, bill dean, dean Janot. Colonel, colonel dean Janot. Yeah. Colonel dean Janot. 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 how do you spell Janot? Uh lieutenant colonel uh juno is uh j-u-n-e-a-u so juno yeah like alaska eh, it could be like juno maybe he's french you just tried to class it up. That was like Dirte. Ah, it's this fine. Adam. We're a classy show. We're a classy <laughs> show, Bert. I that's why s- I wore my. That's why I wore my Crystal Gale shirt today. <laughs> I want to say I that I'm proud of you too, because that's classy right there. Tuck yeah. your shirt into your jeans. Goddamn right it is. Right do you? There. Let me ask you this. Do you, I, I do miss you, Kenny Rogers every day. I know you do too, my man. Do you? I'm wearing my Kenny Rogers shirt on the next episode. Do you have? Uh, are your? Is your shirt tucked in your underwear as well? It is. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you tuck your shirt into your underwear? I don't know. I always <laughs> like. Yeah. If I'm gonna tuck going my shirt in, it's man. going all the way in. That brother. way, you know, it's not going anywhere, dude. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere whatsoever. Bert Coons, thanks Cheers, for not walking Lieutenant off the Colonel show. Bill. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you not walking off, Bert. We love you, man. We miss you. We miss you on the show. We're we're happy you're doing well. Go to BisonUnion.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for twenty percent off. One of the finest to do it, man. Uh, we love your store. We Heck love yeah. your products. And uh, say hi to Candace for us, will you? Will do. Hey, on a final note for me, I, I don't want to be insensitive. Anybody's lost a friend or a family member, somebody know to coronavirus. That's not my point. I feel, you know, I feel for you, and I understand this is a bad deal, but I'll just leave it at that. I'm not trying to make light of anybody's death. Same. And, and, and we don't either. Uh, you know, I think three episodes ago, one of the Drinking Bros of the Week, um, had an uncle that passed away from the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was 78, and, uh, you know, I, again, I think if they reframed it a little better like Sweden did, where it was just like, let's keep those at risk indoors and, and kept the rest of the country open, that would, have, that would have been the way to go. Uh, right for there, Bert bingo. Kuntz, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Cheers, Cheers buddy.